Hi there, welcome to my channel. So in today's video, I'll be showing you how we can create and connect to a, a MariaDB relational database. So, and also I will show you what are the issues or what are the problems that you can face while establishing a connection. So how we can troubleshoot, how you can use this dbviewer in order to connect to the MariaDB from your machine. So, as you know, MariaDB is being sometimes often compared with the MySQL. So, but uh, comparatively, it is uh, more scalable and all. There are lots of uh, pros and cons are there. So you can just have a look into it. So here I will just show you how we can create a MariaDB instance, how we can connect, and that's all. So let's move on to the console. So in the console, you can just type the Amazon RDS. So once you click on that, you just go ahead with creating database. So here, standard create, I am choosing it. And you can see these are the, all the relational database that we have. Uh, Aura, MySQL, then MariaDB, Oracle, Postgres, SQL Server, IBM DB2. So I'm choosing over here, MariaDB. So you can see it's a community edition and it is compatible with the MySQL and it is having a good support from the open source community. So the size, memory optimize, automated backup also it supports and you can have up to 15 read replicas per instance. So I'm not going into read replicas and all. So I will just be creating a free tier one in which just I'll be using a T3 micro instance on which uh, I'll be running this MariaDB. So this is the engine version that I'm using, 10.11.6. So here I will just use over here free. So in order to develop the application as well as testing the applications. So DB instance, let it be a database one. And here credentials, master username. So you can put it over here. So, okay, so remember the password because it will be used to connect. And you can see I'm not changing anything over here, first table class. So we are not including any previous generation class or show instance class that supports Amazon RDS optimized rights. So we can optimize up to 2x at a no additional cost. So here you can see I'm choosing T3 micro DB and uh, storage, general purpose, allocated storage. You can minimum value is 20, let it be 20 over here. And then you, if you go to the storage auto scaling, so enable auto scaling. And if you're enabling the auto scaling, so maximum threshold value, let it be 22. So I'll just choose the minimum value. And for availability and durability, by default for the test, there is a, we, we, we do not create a standby instance, so it is by default being disabled. So if you have a production environment and all, you can just create a standby instance and you can just accordingly, you can choose different availability zones, provide data latency as well as uh, input output freezes, as well as minimize the latency spikes, et cetera, you can do. So here the compute resource, I don't want to connect to any EC2 compute resource or dual stack mode using IPv6 and 4 network type. So I'm just keeping it IPv4 and VPC, let it be the default one. So if you have your own custom, you can utilize that particular one. So DB subnet group, I'm also keeping it default. Here just you have to make it show it's a public access and I'm not choosing any VPC security group. So by default group, it's just going, uh, even the no preference over here in the availability zone. And no need of having a proxy and all. Uh, database authentication, password authentication. I'm not enabling this monitoring and all. Okay, now database options. Let's put over here my RDS demo DB.
Okay, now these are the DB parameter group. That is the default ones, let it be there. You can just check the info over here. So it defines the configuration settings that you want to apply to the DB instance. Enable automated backup. So one day retention number of days, it should be uh, the retention period. So no preference. Copy tags to the snapshots. Encryption by default, it is enabled. And log exports, if you want, you can do it. If you want to define some IAM role, you can also do it in order to publish the logs to the CloudWatch logs. I'm not using that. Enable auto minor version update, no preference when it should be updated. Uh, if you want your DB to be protected from accidental deletion and all, you can enable this DB, uh, enable this delete protection. So it will prevent your database from getting deleted. So this is the cost that is being involved. It's a free tier, no need to worry. You can just go ahead with creating the database. So in the meantime, uh, the database is getting created. So you can see over here, suggested atoms for DB1. So we can have this uh, elastic catch from RDS for our DB settings, we can maintain it. So we can create a cluster for this, or we can use a proxy application to pool and share the database connections to help them scale. So these two options are there. You can just try this options for your the configuration for your database instance. So I'm not going into detail of this. You can just have a look into it, like how the performance is being improved by using the Elastic Cache and how we can utilize this relation database proxy. So in order to make our application more resilient to the database failures and also the connection will be picked up from the pool. Okay, so I'll just close this one. In the meantime, the database is being created. So we will just go to this link. I will provide in the description of the video, dbo.io.download. I'm just using Windows. I will just download the Windows. Just install it. After installation, you will get the icon like this. So I will just remove this existing one. Okay, so once you have installed this, you have to uh, go to, you can just click File, New, or you can just You can click on this, the connections, and you can search for, you can utilize it for multiple RDS. You can see there's a huge list over here. We can have SQL Server, MySQL, MariaDB, SQLite. Uh, so lots of options are there. DB2 for IBM. So I'm just choosing over here MariaDB. Okay, so I need to provide the server host. So that is the endpoint of our MariaDB that has been running in the AWS. So, and then the username password, what the, we have provided while installation. I think, let me, okay. So I have provided just, I'll wait for this. If you want to provide the database name, it's your wish. Otherwise you can keep it black. The most important thing is our server host. So let's go back here. They're still creating. Let me refresh this one. Okay, so it's still creating. So we will just wait for a while for the setup to complete. So you can see the instance has been created. It is just backing up. So we can just go into this and just copy the endpoint. So I'll just copy this endpoint over here, making sure the port number 3306, that is the default port, is there. Okay, so let's go to this one. And just we will provide over here the URL and just test the connection. So there might be some uh, libraries and all might be missing and not. So it will automatically add 
those drivers and all. So here you can see I already got connected over here. So let me finish it up. But in some scenarios, you will be getting some uh, socket issues or something like that. So you can see our database is here. You can see my DB, my RDS demo DB. So you can just normally you can create a new table or whatever you want, you can perform the operations. So sometimes you will be having some issues uh, while accessing, while establishing the connection. So the socket issues will be there. So make it sure if you go to this default security group, sometimes the inbound rules are not being there in place. So you will be having some Okay, this is a security group, the default security group. You can see two permission entries are being made over here. You can see over here. So you might not get over here this one. Sometimes it happens because when I was uh, doing it for the first time, very first time, I was not having this entry being made in the inbound rules. So make it sure this entry is there for MySQL and all and the source is custom you can have like any ip and the port number is 3306 so if it is not there you will be start getting error in establishing the connection so make it sure whatever security group you are using you should have this inbound rule being mentioned over there so there are many other like uh, troubleshooting tips are given over here if you're having some uh, challenges with the connecting so you, most probably you'll be getting some jdbc driver issues so normally your that client one that it will automatically update but still if you're facing then you can uh, check one by one those troubleshooting tips over here so we can find some connection information you can utilize even the console or to connect to the console and you can use a cli or rds apis also you can utilize it even you can connect from mysql command line client that is the one that we are using over here by mentioning the endpoint so make it show uh, the ssl and tls is there encrypted and even the jdbc and rest like maybe when you're using some python uh, driver is is not available there so that you need to take care from the packages so these are the few troubleshooting tips they have given to you. So make it show the, the very first thing you need to check with the inbound rules. The port number is allowed and that's all. So you can utilize this MariaDB. I hope uh, you enjoyed this video. So give a try to this MariaDB. If you face any issues, do let me know. So please do like, share, subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.